President Trump is pushing hard to stamp out sanctuary city policies, saying that cities must either drop these policies or lose federal funding. The mayor of New Orleans, Mitch Landrieu, won't call his city a sanctuary city, but nevertheless, New Orleans has many policies that protect the rights of illegal immigrants. Police cannot inquire about a person's immigration status. They won't detain suspected illegal aliens at the request of ICE. Mayor Landrieu says these policies make his city safer. On the other hand, crime is surging in New Orleans in the last year, and so the question is, is it working? Mayor Landrieu joins us now. Mr. Mayor, thanks for coming on. Hey, Tucker, how are you? I'm doing great. So I have a lot good. of friends in New Orleans. Well, thank you. And of course, I know you. All my friends think you're a good mayor. You care about New Orleans. <laughs> how? No, it's, it's true. You're a popular mayor. How is this policy, though, helping the people of your city? Exactly. Well, first of all, you, you, you misstated something in the beginning of it. So let me, just, let me just state this. And I think you and I and everybody can agree that our first order of business is to make sure the people uh, that live in America are safe and secure. And I think that's right. everybody's priority. And we're trying to figure out a way to get that done. <clears throat> What's interesting about the sanctuary city argument, as you know, is that it's not even a definitive definition in federal law. So it means a lot of things to a lot of different that's people. Right. Essentially, I want to be really clear about this. Should the New Orleans Police Department arrest anybody for a violent crime, our job, irrespective of immigration status, is to put them in jail and to make sure ICE knows about it so they can come get them and deport them or have them prosecuted here and put in jail. That really has never been a bone of contention for anybody that lives in the city of New Orleans and for that point of matter for mayors across America. The macro question is why would we be taking crime advice from the mayor of a city that has a real crime problem that appears to be getting a lot worse? And the second well, question first would of all, be, that's a, oh, hold on, but, I mean, well, I've got the numbers right here. Your murder rate has sure. almost doubled from uh, January of last year. Your rapes are up almost 100 percent. In every category, crime has increased about 10 percent overall. I'm not saying it's your fault. I'm really saying that clearly these policies that you say will alleviate crime haven't. Moreover, is there well, any first, actual evidence, like social science, to prove that your talking point, which I've heard a thousand times, if we ask people their immigration status, they won't cooperate with the police, will have more crime. Where do you get that? I mean, is, how do you well, know that's all, true? Me, let me, well, because are all good questions, so let me, let me respond to them. Yeah. First of all, in the city of New Orleans, from 1996 until today, crime is half what it used to be. As a matter of fact, two years ago, we hit our lowest murder rate in 40 years. Now, right. you are right that in the last year, crime has gone back up, but if you look Since at it overall... Since these policies have gone into place, I'm no, not saying no, they no, caused these, this, first of all, this no, no, spike, but wait, but, but wait, let me finish. You said you were going to let me finish. So, secondly, these policies, these particular policies have nothing to do with that particular crime because the people that are committing those crimes are not folks that are here illegally. Now, we do have a challenge throughout all of America. On, on issues of violence that we have really got to get a handle on. But the question gets to be, how do you actually do that and what's the best way? Now, the, the answer to your second question is, how do I know this? Is there in any empirical data? I rely on my generals in the field. And those guys in the American cities are the major police chiefs across America, along with the major sheriff's association, who always have told us, these are the guys we listen to, said, if you guys make us become a deportation force, for ICE, we're going to push all these individuals back in the shadow, and it's going to make it harder for us okay. to solve crimes uh, for everybody, been, especially I, I if you take that. money I've away from that. us. I wrote a book on this actually years ago. I've heard this mm -hmm. line many, many times, but we study crime. There are armies of criminologists at America's universities, and nobody has shown that your claim is true. That, that's my only point. We don't actually know that's true. That, that's the opinion of a lot of people, for sure, including you. Well, but we don't know uh, it. And listen, by the way, uh, if, uh, these, if these policies are meant to make your city safer, why has it become more dangerous? I'm not saying they cause well, would, it to be more dangerous. That's a good, it's, it's a good question. It's, it's, a great, it's, a great, it's a great question. One of the reasons why cities become unsafe is because, number one, we don't have a pol enough police officers on the street. Number two, we don't invest sufficiently in mental health and substance abuse treatment. Number three, the federal government does not have a direct authority to get the bad guys with guns off the street. It has to be attached uh, to some kind of drug offense. And number four, there isn't enough coordination. If we did the same things we did back in 1996, where we put that crime plan together without the bad parts of the crime bill, you would actually be able to reduce crime on the streets. Okay. This is not necessarily, wait, 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 let me finish. This is not necessarily tethered to the issue of immigration. And by the way, if you I'm, can find anybody in America, in any uni it has I know, a major city well, safer. You, well, you made, you made, you asked me a question that intimated that that was the answer. Now, but let me, let me just finish this point for you. If you can find anybody in America that has definitively found the answer 
to young kids killing young kids over inconsequential things who don't have a job, who don't have an appropriate right. education. Now, we need to make a huge investment in those kinds of things and not let it get caught up in the issue of immigration. And let me just finish with this. The, the thing that makes me so sad As about this. As a matter of faith, I know it's from your point of view. Maybe they are tied. In some cities, they are tied. In Los Angeles, well, it's directly, they're directly related to one another. Nobody denies that. That's not always true, as you well, know. That's not. That's correct. Nothing's always true in all circumstances. Every city is a little bit different. And this is a very complicated problem. But I'll tell you, the answer is not as simple as what's coming out of the White House. And what pains me is I actually think the country okay. is in a moment, just like only Nixon could go to China, maybe only Trump can do immigration reform, where we could actually get this done in a way that was positive for everybody, with everybody making sacrifices. Okay, so and I, we just seem to be battling with each other about. Well, it. I think that's uh, so a lot of what you say is true. Now, really, just very quickly, in the interest of you know sure. civil discourse, you issued a press release in which you describe the president's ban on immigration temporarily from those seven countries that I'm quoting as un-American and unchristian. It seems like something like the Pope would say, you're a mayor. So like, do you well, think about the policies well, in New Orleans through the lens of whether or not they're Christian and should you? Well, let me say this. I'm a person of faith. I was yeah, raised good. in the Catholic faith and the church and actually I think a lot of what people say in terms of what America's values are are really important and of course it's not just Christian values but Judeo-Christian values and other values as well about whether we ought to be an open group or whether we ought to be closed, whether we ought to be reaching out to people or we ought to be able to slap them. I think one of the challenges I have with the president who, who I know is trying to do the right thing is he seems to solve every problem with a battle axe and not with a scalpel. And, you know, we're, we had a, a couple of difficult 10 days here where right a lot of mishaps. That, but un-American, un-Christian? I mean, that's not a scalpel either. I mean, it's not well, a defensive Trump, but like, un-American? No, Who says that? that? No, that for, well, first of all, I think that American values support reaching out to people okay. and trying to help them rather than trying to punish them, working right. through issues. Not saying, for example, uh, th I just saw this yesterday at the prep record. I'm sorry, they're telling me the satellite's about to die. Will you just hit me with it? So I'm <laughs> sorry right. to do that. Well, we'll finish. No, we'll finish another time. I want to come back and talk to you. I think you'd okay. be great, and, and uh, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Great to talk to you. All right, Appreciate you guys. It. See ya. See ya.